In this chapter, we'll study the news vendor model. The news vendor model, also known as news boy model, is a tool for making a decision when there is a too much versus too little challenge. Bet too much and there's a cost, such as leftover inventory. Bet too little and there is a different cost, such as the opportunity cost of lost sales. To make this trade up effectively, it is necessary to have a forecast of demand with not only a single sales forecast, but also the potential variation about that demand forecast. Here's an example of such a forecast. The demand follows a normal distribution with mean of 3000 and standard deviation of 1000. Indeed, we will focus on normally disputed demand forecasts in this chapter. As suggested by its name, the origin of the news vendor model is from managing inventory and order quantity. That is also where this model is used most widely. The examples we are going to discuss will be largely from inventory management setting. However, the news vendor model itself can be applied to many other settings. We will use the news vendor example to explain key concepts in the news vendor model. Suppose you are a news vendor every morning. You have to make a decision on how many copies of newspaper you will order from your supplier. It's obvious that you have to make this decision before the actual demand occurs. The underlying assumption is that you have only one chance to order newspaper. If it turns out that later in the day, the demand for today's newspaper is more than what you ordered, there will be no second chance or it will be too late for you to replenish your newspaper inventory. It's also reasonable to assume that the newspaper publisher or your supplier can satisfy whatever quantity you order. The demand for the newspaper is uncertain. We assume that the demand follows a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. The publisher or supplier charges you C dollars for every copy of newspaper, whereas you charge your customer P dollars per copy. Of course, P is greater than C, otherwise you'll lose money for every copy of newspaper you sell. Let's say you order Q copies of the newspaper. There are two possible scenarios. One, the demand turns out to be less than Q. In this scenario, you will have leftover newspaper. Let's say that you can recycle unsold copies of newspaper for S dollars per copy. S is usually called salvage value. Apparently, S will be much less than C. When this scenario occurs, your cost will be C minus S. This is the unit cost for having too many copies of newspaper. This cost is denoted by CO, typically called overage cost or overstocking cost. The other scenario will be you do not order enough copies of newspaper. That is, the actual demand is more than your order quantity, Q. In this second scenario, your cost is actually an opportunity cost. That is, you've lost opportunity for making more profit. For each potential customer that does not find a copy of newspaper available, your loss would be the profit margin, P minus C. This loss or cost is denoted by CU, typically called underage cost or understocking cost. Your responsibility is to find the order quantity that strikes a nice balance between the overage cost of CO and underage cost of CU. More strictly speaking, it is to find the order quantity that maximizes your expected profit. Now, let's see how we can find the optimal order quantity that maximizes the expected profit. 
let's define some notations first. Q is the order quantity, the decision that the news vendor has to make. Capital FQ is the probability that demand will be less than or equal to order quantity Q. This probability is also called in-stock probability. Obviously, the stock out probability will simply be 1 minus FQ. The way to find the optimal order quantity comes from basic economic principle that marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue at the optimum. To be exact in our case, it is the expected marginal cost equal to the expected marginal revenue. How do we know the expected marginal cost and revenue? Suppose that the news vendor currently orders Q copy. What is the benefit and cost of ordering one more unit? If this additional unit turns out to be leftover inventory, then it costs the news vendor CO dollars. The probability of this unit being leftover inventory is simply the probability that the demand is less than or equal to Q, that is, FQ. Therefore, the expected marginal cost is CO times FQ. Similarly, the benefit or revenue of selling this additional unit is just the marginal profit or cost of underage. The probability of that will be the probability that the demand is more than Q, that is 1 minus FQ. At the optimum, we will have CO times FQ star equal CU times 1 minus FQ star. Q star indicates that this order quantity is optimal. We solve for FQ star and get FQ star is equal to CU divided by the sum of CU and CO. This ratio is called critical ratio or optimal service level or optimal in stock probability. Suppose FQ star is say 70% then the optimal order quantity is to make sure that demand will be met 70% of the time. Another interpretation is that when a customer drops by, he or she will have 70% chance to find the newspaper available. Now consider a simple example. Let's say the news vendor charges his customers $2 per copy of the newspaper, and he purchases the newspaper from its supplier at $0.80 cents per copy. The news vendor can recycle the unsold copies and get $0.10 cents for savage value. Therefore, CU will be equal to P minus C, which is $1.20. CO will be C minus S, which is $0.70. Cents. The critical ratio will be $1.20 over $1.90, which turns out to be 63.16%. That is to say, in order to maximize the expected profit, the news vendor should order such a quantity that meets demand 63.16% of the time. Next, we will see how we can find the optimal order quantity itself. It will depend on the demand distribution. For convenience, we assume that the demand is normally distributed rest of the way. Now that we assume that the demand is normally distributed let mu be the mean of the demand and sigma be the standard deviation of the demand. The critical ratio FQ star can be expressed in this Excel normal distribution function. Norm dot BIST Q star mu sigma and 1. The Z score by definition is the number of standard deviations away from the mean is simply Q star minus mu divided by sigma. So we can convert a general normal distribution to standard normal distribution. Using Excel standard
standard normal distribution function, we have critical ratio CR equal to norm dot S dot DIST Z1. In both normal distribution functions, the last element 1 indicates that this is a cumulative function. Next, we can use inverse standard normal distribution function to find the z-score that corresponds to our critical ratio. In Excel, it is norm.s.invcr. Once we have the z-score, we can find the optimal order quantity to Q-star easily. Q-star will be equal to mu plus z times sigma. On the next slide, we'll revisit our new surrender example and see how we can compute the optimal order quantity Q star. Based on our previous example, let's assume that daily newspaper demand at this news vendor follows a normal distribution with a mean of 100 copies and a standard deviation of 20 copies. We already know that the critical ratio is 63.16%. To find the corresponding z-score, we use the inverse standard normal distribution function in Excel. We have z equal norm dot s dot inv 0.6316. The z-score turns out to be 0.3361. With that, we can calculate the optimal order quantity. It is 100 plus 0.3361 times 20, which is equal to 107. That is, by ordering 107 copies of newspaper every day, this news vendor can maximize his expected profit. Next, let's investigate a few important performance measures, including expected lost sales, expected sales, expected leftover inventory, and expected profit. Once again, I'd like to point out that these analyses are based on normally distributed demand. The expected lost sales can be computed as sigma times L of Z, where LZ is the loss function with the standard normal distribution. Given a normal distribution, the loss function can be written as follows using Excel's normal distribution function. Norm.dst z010 minus z times 1 minus norm.s.dst z1. In the first normal distribution function, the last element 0 indicates that this is a probability density function. In the second normal distribution function, the last element 1 indicates this is a cumulative distribution function. Here, we skip the technical details. Should you be interested, please feel free to check out the appendix in the textbook. As we know, when a customer drops by to buy a copy of newspaper, this customer will find the newspaper either available or out of stock. The former case is sales, and the latter case is lost sales. So, the sum of the expected sales and the expected lost sales will simply be the expected demand. And we know that the expected demand is mu, so to compute the expected sales, it is simply expected demand mu minus the expected lost sales. On the other hand, for any copy of newspaper, it will either be sold or unsold, depending on the demand. So the sum of the expected sales and the expected leftover inventory will simply be the order quantity Q to compute the expected leftover inventory, it is simply Q minus the expected sales. The last performance measure we'll look at is 
the expected profit. On one hand, for each copy of newspaper we expect to sell, we get a profit of CU. On the other hand, for each unsold copy at the end of the day, we lose CO. So the expected profit is CU times the expected sales minus CO times the expected leftover inventory. Of course, we can reorganize terms and get a few different but equivalent formulas for calculating the expected profit. Next, let's revisit our news vendor example one more time to see how we can compute these performance measures. Based on our example, the expected lost sales will be equal to sigma times LZ, which is 20 times norm.dst 0.3361010 minus 0.3361 times 1 minus norm.s.dst 0.3361 Recall that our z-score is 0.3361. And we have the following. The expected lost sales is equal to 20 times 0.2532, which is approximately 5 copies of newspaper. The expected sales will be mu minus the expected lost sales. It's going to be equal to 100 minus 5, which is 95 copies. The expected leftover inventory is Q minus expected sales. In our case, it's going to be 107 minus 95, which is 12 copies. In the end, the expected profit is equal to CU times expected sales minus CO times the expected leftover inventory. In our case, it is 1.2 times 95 minus 0.7 times 12, it turns out to be 105.6. That is to say, our expected profit per day is $105.60.